hello hey what's up everybody we are live on twitch and mixer to react to these ufc 246 videos this is going to be two parts to this live stream first of all we are going to be taking a look at the early weigh-ins which took place earlier on today obviously because they're early and then in around 20 minutes from now the ceremonial weigh-ins are scheduled to start so we'll go straight into watching them together as well we are live streaming on both twitch and mixer so hello everybody drop a comment in the live chat and uh, let me know what you think of these fighters and also i might upload this after the fact on youtube i'm not too sure i can't live stream this on youtube because the last time i tried to do one of these live streams on youtube I got banned for three months from live streaming, but they seem to be fine with me uploading videos like this after the fact. So if you are watching this video after the fact on YouTube, please hit the like button and also subscribe. So let's uh, let's get into uh, let's get into watching some of these uh, some of these videos, shall we? Or well, some of these live streams, two sex guys, well, and we are sex, yeah we are working fine on yeah. Twitch, all good. Right then, everybody, let's uh, let's get into it. So uh, the first thing we are going to do, go through these early weigh-ins. Let's kick off and see what we have got going on here. So very very kind of MMAfighting.com to uh, to cut this video up nicely for us, 24 minutes long. Although it is quite far back, is there a better version? Uh, is there a better cut version than this? Because that one, uh, they are quite far away from the stage. Uh, that one looks like it's only the main event. Would be better to find a better quality one if we can. Um, looks like we're stuck with this one from MMA Fighting. But we'll be grateful all the same. So here is Donald Cerrone looking much healthier. Obviously weighing in at 170 pounds. Than he did at 155. You know what? When Donald Cerrone was weighing in at 155 pounds for his fights against Gaethje and Ferguson, he really did look old. He looked his age. He's 37 years old in two months' time. But you know what? Weighing in here at welterweight, he looks absolutely fantastic. He looks healthy. Uh, he uh, he looks all filled out, muscular. I'm ready to go, man. It is even more colour and vibrance in his hair. Did you guys notice when he was fighting at 155 against Gaethje and Ferguson, his beard was all scraggly, he had lots of grey hair in his beard and in his uh, and in his haircut, really, whereas here, Cerrone looks absolutely fantastic. So, at 170, looks like uh, looks like he's a hell of a lot healthier, and that's... That, that easier weight kept reverberating all around his body. He just is glowing at the moment. Here's Tim Elliott. Also looks pretty damn good. Pretty damn standard. Doesn't look like it was too much of a cut for Elliott. Looking absolutely fine here. Uh, you'd think that this might have been a really, really tough cut for Elliott. Because this fight is at £125. Obviously, Elliott did fight at bantamweight you know, for some period of his career. But Elliott certainly looking fine there. Absolutely nothing to worry about. Who is next to weigh in? We have got Ode Osborne. Ode Osborne making his UFC debut. Um, he has got a strange wingspan for a bantamweight. He's he's about average size, a little bit small for a bantamweight of five foot seven. But he's got an absolutely enormous reach at, at you know seventy two inches. Some heavyweights have only got a reach of seventy two inches. Uh, so Ode Osborne will have a reach over almost everyone in the division, despite not being that tall. And he looks great here. Doesn't again look like it was too much of a difficult cut. Looks very very healthy. Looks absolutely fine and ready to go for his UFC debut. Nice to see a fighter making their UFC debut after having a healthy cut. Who is up next? Oh, hey, beep, beep in my Jeep. How are you doing, man? Hey, Vert. Hey, monkey. This is going to be Raquel Pennington. Of course, Raquel does struggle to make weight because she did develop a hypothyroidism, the hypothyroidism disease, after her fight with Amanda Nunes, which messes with you know hormone levels and you know a woman's ability to cut weight as well as there being tons of other symptoms which I won't bore you with here but making weight for Raquel Pennington has become a lot more difficult since developing hypothyroidism which is autoimmune in nature but it looks like she had a very good cut here looking very very comfortable on on the scales and also very very healthy indeed not a sweat for Raquel Pennington and also one of the first fighters to weigh in 
uh, looking pretty damn healthy. This is Anthony Pettis. You know, last couple of fights have been at 170 pounds. He is coming back down to lightweight to take on Carlos Diego Ferreira. And looks pretty damn good as well, man. Face is a little bit sucked in. But other than that, all good. And I guess you'd expect these first few fighters to... Uh, you know, be looking good on the scales because they are the ones that showed up first for the early weigh-ins, which means they were keen to wake up. They were up bright and early in the morning to get it done. And we've certainly seen Anthony Pettis look much worse uh, when he's been weighing in for £155. A money man investing, yes, as soon as this... Uh, live stream is over guys head on over to my website we're going to be live streaming Sabina Marzo the research for Sabina Marzo versus um Sabina Marzo versus JJ Aldrich and obviously Holly Holm against Raquel Pennington now this is Brian Callagher of course Brian Callagher if we go to the Twitter uh, we do have some big uh, big eyeballs on Kelleher here because recently he did tweet that he was having a very, very difficult weight cut just uh, a week or so ago. He said, carb deficit, about to go three workouts deep today just to get my weight down. Weight won't move. Fuck this shit. Hey, pal, want to not cut weight and just fight at our natural weights healthily? I'm sure you would agree. Send the new contract. So... Kelleher possibly with a very difficult weight cut for this fight. Let's see how he looks on the scales. Almost had a, a bit of a shot of his uh, his gonads there. But actually, considering what Kelleher was saying, and of course Kelleher has missed weight in the past, doesn't look too bad. Definitely looking a little bit dehydrated in the face, a little bit sucked in in the face. But other than that, not the end of the world. He's looking all right here. We've seen Kelleher look much worse. And of course, he has missed weight in the past. So... Osborne and Kelleher both looking all right. Osborne looks brilliant, actually ready to go for his debut. But we've seen Kelleher look a hell of a lot worse than that. Next up, who do we have? This is going to be... This is going to be... Who is this coming to the scales? Is this uh, Alexa Camus? I believe this is Alexa Camus. Didn't recognize him at first. Of course, this is his UFC debut. Trains with Steve Miocic, 5-0. And uh, looking pretty good for his UFC debut. He is on the smaller scale for a light heavyweight. I think he's only six foot tall or six foot one. Doesn't have a particularly long inch reach. I think he's about seven, seven, 74 inches on the reach. So you wouldn't expect Camo to look bad at the weigh-ins. He looks pretty normal, pretty standard and pretty healthy. But it is worth noting he hasn't been training with Stipe for this fight. Because Stipe is still recovering from a pretty serious injury. Appleman999 say he looks like the bad guy from the Sin City. That is harsh, man. That is harsh, dude. Uh, and Vichek saying Anthony Brittle Pettis. Yes, yes, yes. It's a tough fight for him against F Ferreira, man. Right? Wish the odds were a little bit better on Ferreira. This is Sadiq Yusuf. And uh, Yusuf is also quite small for a featherweight with his wingspan and his height. And, I mean, I'm not sure if... He is looking a little bit under the weather here because he just woke up. Remember, these weigh-ins would have been early in the morning. Looks like Yusuf was one of the first guys to weigh in. I mean, in his face, just looking a little bit tired, a little bit run down. Maybe it was a late night cutting weight. But physically, he looks absolutely fine, I suppose. Um, but yeah, didn't look the happiest, didn't look the freshest, looked quite low energy. But again, that might be just because he's rolled out of bed to make weight. And uh, maybe he was up late. What in God's fuck is this? Maybe he was up late trying to uh trying to cut right this is roxanne modafieri modafieri looking very healthy here actually quite physically imposing as well quite big for a flyweight uh remember modafieri did used to fight at bantamweight when there wasn't a flyweight division i think she's on the ultimate fighter at bantamweight and then was also on the ultimate fighter at 125 pounds but yeah, Modafieri looking very healthy here. Doesn't look like it was a tough cut for her at all. And I hear, I've heard the day that Barbara had some issues making weight. So it'll be interesting to see how she looked. Some people are accusing her of, uh, of, of, of missing weight, basically, because of some shenanigans with the scale. This is Drew Dober. Drew Dober always looks good at weigh-ins. He's quite small for the lightweight division, to be honest. Doesn't have the long... He actually has an abnormally short... Uh, reach for the division quite short so it should usually be a comfortable weight cut for Doba and uh, he is he looking good here yeah a little bit sucked in in the face actually his face a little bit more sucked in than you usually see from Doba Doba usually looks a little bit better than this Doba's one of these guys that you you just expect to turn up and look great at the weigh-ins um, but Doba not actually uh, looking that great actually in his face looks quite dehydrated quite sucked in 
which I wouldn't have expected because he's on the smaller side for a lightweight. So who is up next? Who is up next? We have got Carlos Diego Ferreira. Now, Ferreira always looks terrible at the weigh-ins, always looks like Skeletor, always looks like death. And you know what? He looks a hell of a lot better here than he usually does. Ferreira usually looks much, 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 much worse than this. Skeletor, I mean, Ferreira looks like a walking skeleton, but his face nowhere near as sucked in or dehydrated as we usually see from him. He's got a long history of missing weight. He's looking good. He's looking healthy. He's just got a big win over Tyson. He must realize how massive of an opportunity this is, you know, against Anthony Pettis this weekend. And it's very, very clear to me that Ferrer is taking this camp dead seriously. So that's the best we've seen him look at the weigh-ins for a long time. Let me know what you think about uh, how Ferreira looked there, boys. If you watch these weigh-in live streams with me regularly, you'll know that the Ferreira is looking a hell of a lot better than usual. This is Justin Ledet. Um, Ledet used to fight at heavyweight, so you wouldn't think the cut to 205 would be too bad. He was on the smaller side for heavyweight. Looks pretty standard here. Ledet's a wild dude, man. He's a flat earther, makes his own soap. Um, former pro boxer. Very, very, very... He's seen as a bit of a joke, really. I think he's seen a bit as a bit of a joke because of the... You know, the, the, the quick KO loss to walk, and maybe casual fans aren't that familiar with Ledet. Also, Rackage dominated him on the ground. But in terms of actual striking, Ledet's legit, man. His boxing is very, very good. Who is this? It is Nazrat Hakarast going to the towel here again. Um, Hakarast is on the smaller side for a lightweight uh, alongside Doba. He's only 5'10, doesn't have the longest reach. Uh, this is quite strange because Nazrat actually looks very good here. Doesn't look like it's been that that much of a tough weight cut for him. Uh, his face isn't that sucked in. Um, he doesn't look that dehydrated. Maybe it was uh, maybe it was just uh, very very close to the, the the lightweight limit, right? And he didn't know if he was on weight or not. Um, but Nazrat looks very healthy here. Very good. Very standard. Um, doesn't show any signs of a bad weight cut, so I'm guessing he was just a very, very close to the 156 pound limit. And just before we go any further, let me make sure that no other fighters apart from Grasso did miss weight, because I assume that everyone made weight apart apart from her, and we haven't got audio on. Um, there we go. Let's take a quick skim through this. Um, let's take a look. Where have we got? One, two, five. Yeah, yeah. Everyone's making weight. Everyone's good. Good, good, good. Good, 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 good. Yeah, so the only person the only person that missed weight was uh was uh Grasso, and obviously that fight is cancelled now. So this is Asker Askarov. Second fight in the UFC um, against Tim Elliott, which looked really, really bad in his UFC debut, uh, but has been training with Mark Henry since the Moreno fight in his UFC debut. He moved from his gyms in Russia with his former training partner in Russia, Zabit Magomed Sharapov, over to New York to train with Mark Henry. Maybe we'll see a different version of Askarov this weekend. He'll need to look better than he did against Moreno, or he's really going to struggle against Elliott. But he looked very, very good here, very healthy. Um, and looks like the weight cut was pretty easy for him. And, you know, I think he's about five foot seven, so he's a pretty big flyweight. So nice to see Askarov looking that healthy there. Um, you would have thought that it might have been a pretty uh, pretty tough, tough weight cut for him. This is JJ Aldrich, who again has had a few problems in the past making the weight. Let's see how she looks here. Training partner of Rose Namajunas, also spent a lot of time training with the Shevchenko sisters. She'll have Trevor Whitman in her corner this weekend, no doubt. And uh, I'm a big fan of JJ Aldrich. She's very, very good. And she looks very good here. Obviously, um, you know, the sun is going to be her biggest enemy. Uh, but uh, hopefully she gets past Sabina Mazo this weekend. It's a good matchup for her. She's looking very healthy here. Looks like it was a pretty pretty standard, pretty easy weight cut. If anything, a little soft. But that's how Aldrich always looks. So no real concerns there. Next up, who have we got? This is uh, Alexi Olenek. Doesn't even bother taking his t-shirt off. There's no need. He has had a million fights. He's 42 years old. He's uh, quite... He's on this... 
He's not the biggest heavyweight. Uh, Green's going to have a big size advantage over him this weekend. And uh, and that's Mr. Olenek. Now, this is Andre Philly. Andre Philly always makes weight, but it does at times look like he has to kill himself to make the weight. He is a big featherweight. He is a you know a big, long, rangy fighter, but doesn't look too bad here. Face is a little bit sucked in. A decent amount of meat on the bones. Looking, looking pretty good. Actually, Philly looking very healthy here now that the camera zooms in. Uh, looks like it was one of the better weight cuts for Philly. We've seen Philly look much worse than this, although he is licking his lips, perhaps. He's quite a bit dehydrated here and dying for a glass of water. He even took his fake tooth out to help him make weight. Next step, oh, Danny Castillo in uh, in his uh, coming out with him in his corner as well, stick, kicking around. Um, kicking around Team Alpha Male still. No point in taking a look at Claudia. Because we know her fight is now cancelled because Alexa Grasso missed weight by six pounds. Now a lot of people are telling me that they were betting Pennington after seeing this weigh in because Holly Holm looked dreadful. Uh, remember Holly Holm's almost forty years old, and I would have to agree with her. Let's just agree with them. Let's just pause this for a second. So Holly Holm is a big girl. She's fought at one hundred and forty-five pounds in the past. Obviously been a bantamweight for the majority of her career. On episode 4 of Embedded this week, she did tell Conor McGregor that she would make the weight, but it was a very difficult weight cut for her. And I mean, she's almost 40 years old now, right? How old is uh, how old is Holly Holm? Let's take a look. Uh, I think she's like 38 years old, maybe? Yep, 38 years old. So, you know, it's not going to be easy for a woman, you know, with with over well with close to 20 pro fights tens of pro boxing fights tens of kickboxing fights at almost 40 years old to keep dropping weight and switching these weight classes it does get harder to make the weight as you get older and holly definitely not looking very good here at all um just doesn't look healthy really um you know not doesn't look particularly dehydrated particularly terrible but not good not good that's probably the worst we've ever seen Holly Holm look at a weight cut. So uh, very interesting because Pennington looked great. Now Conor McGregor, this is one that we are interested in. Um, Conor McGregor, how is he looking at 170 pounds? I'll never ever forget. I bet on him as a huge favourite to beat Nate Diaz in their first fight. And I'll never forget when he came out looking like a white Tyron Woodley. I literally couldn't believe it. Um, and obviously he gassed out after four minutes. He also slowed down big time against Diaz uh, in the around about the seven or eight minute mark of their rematch, but he was just kind of able to, you know, take breaks in certain areas and 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 kind of fight smart and outsmart Diaz a little bit and get away with it. And uh, looking very very healthy here, but also big man, big old arms, big old upper body, and you just have to question, man, like. And maybe RDA is the best example I can think of. At 155 pounds, RDA was light on his feet, cardio for days, um, just an absolute machine. And I know people will say, you know, USADA is a, you know, much of the reason why RDA looks so different at 170 than he did at 155. But can, can Connor fight at a high pace for 25 minutes with that type of body, with that type of frame? I'm not so sure, man. I don't know. He is a big dude. We're going to find out. Um, no point in watching Grasso because she missed weight and uh, the fight is off. Who have we got next? Grasso getting back on the scale for her pictures. This is going to be Maurice Green. So Maurice Green, massive uh, heavyweight. I don't know how much he weighs in at. I'm guessing it's close to 265 pounds. Is he going to even weigh in with the headphones on? No, he's not. He's going to take him off, which means he probably is close to the 265 pound limit. If I had to guess, I'd guess Olenek's about 240, 245, 250, something like that. So Maurice Green looking pretty good, pretty standard. Um, on the Ultimate Fighter, you see he's got the Tef 28 tattoo by here. He used to brag about, you know, drinking, liking junk food, um, like partying and all that sort of stuff. We've cleaned him, his act up quite a bit. And, uh, and he looks a lot better here than he did on Tef. He's actually got abs now, which is cool to see. Next up, Macy Barber. So some people were saying that uh, Macy Barber actually missed weight. 
um, and that they did a little bit of shenanigans with the old scales. And I have to say, Macy Barber does not look good here at all. Macy Barber very sucked in, very dehydrated, not looking healthy at all here. And, uh, you know, I would actually say that her and Holly Holm, I would say, look the worst out of everyone we've added this way. And she doesn't look so bad, actually, now that she's looked up and she's smiling. But um, her face looking quite a bit sucked in, then quite a bit dehydrated. Holly Holm not looking great either. Everyone else pretty standard. This is Sabina Mazo And Jesus, Sabina Mazo and uh, JJ Aldrich will be looking like uh, two polar bears fighting in there on Saturday night. Both extremely pale. Um, and thank God that this fight takes place in an indoor arena because they would not want to be outdoors uh, with this severe lack of melanin in their skin. But Marzo looking all right here, looking pretty standard, pretty good. Nothing to really talk about there. Who is next? Oh, okay, so she didn't make the weight. She's got to get naked, um, but I'm guessing she makes the weight anyway. What she last the way in? Looks like she might have been. Yes, I think she was. All right, all right, all right. So what we will do, we will watch the official weigh-ins now, boys. And then I'll go back and, and catch up with all the comments. Uh, Robinson Canolis, how would my guy Boom look on the main card now versus Osborne? Yeah, he looked all right, to be honest. Considering he said to everyone he was struggling, yeah, Kelleher looked, looked pretty good. And, I mean, this is a cr massive opportunity for him, right? Osborne's really not that good. If you if Kelleher just comes out, fights smart, goes to his wrestling, should be an easy night's work for him, man. Kelleher is attempting bet this weekend. What are it? What are his odds? Have they improved? Because I know everyone and their mother have been on Osborne this week. Um, I haven't really moved too much. Still around two point two five. Anyway, let's uh, let's get into these official weigh-ins and see if we've got any. Big size differences to talk about. Any notable size differences? Uh, I know that the size difference between uh, Maurice Green and Olenek should be pretty big. Oh, they haven't started yet. They were scheduled. To, that can't be right. They were scheduled to start 15 minutes ago. Surely they've started. No. Oh, well. They haven't started yet, boys. So we will just have a bit of a... Uh, we will just have a bit of a catch-up on the comments while we wait for him to start. So they're about... 10 minutes late. Connor was on time for the uh, the press conference. Maybe he's been late here. Let's catch up. So Money Man Investing is saying home is a minus 135 favourite. And from my research, I feel like there's some value. Curious to see a breakdown though. I know home was a very heavy favourite in her last fight against Raquel. Around minus 600 if I recall. Yeah, I forgot they fought, man. That fight was a long time ago. I mean, I wouldn't be betting Holly home here, man. She's almost 40 years old. She just looked terrible at the weigh-ins. I would... I haven't researched it yet, but I'd be surprised if I bet home here. And remember, boys, if you are a member of my website, slide on over to my website after we're done on this live stream. So I'm going to be researching the fight between Sabina Mazo uh, and JJ Aldrich and also home and Pennington. Just come to the homepage, roll the mouse over community, hit up live streams, and that's where we'll be going live on that. Next up. Lone Stranger saying, God, I hope Roxanne pulls it off. Yeah, it would be nice to see Roxanne win, man. You know, everyone's counting her out. People see Roxanne as a bit of a joke, but she's not that bad, man. On the ground, she's got like a freakily, freakish heavy top game, man. She is a nightmare from top position. Apple Man 999 saying Carlos Diego Ferreira is going to crush Pettis. Yeah, I agree, man. I think so, dude. I just wish his odds were slightly better. I was hoping they were going to improve, and they haven't. They've just been floating around this all week. It's tough for me to bet him at these odds, man. It is, it is really tough for me to bet him. You know what I mean? 1.43. 1. 1. Yeah, to cap him at better than 70%, it is tough for me, man. But I do think Diego Ferreira wins. It is a reluctant pass for me, man. I want to bet him for sure. I really do. I better turn this off, actually. This might actually get us copyright flagged. So I'm actually going to slide this over here. Can I do that? Yeah, I'm going to slide this there. I'm going to put that there. And we will get rid of uh, we will get rid of the fight pass thing because it might get us copyright flagged. Right. Uh, Appleman999 saying Ledette has good boxing, huge re reach advantage. Yeah, for sure. For sure, man. Um... For sure. You know, it's just a shame that we haven't got more footage on Kamur, right? Because we've never seen Kamur try and take anyone down. 
if the fight stays standing, like Ledet should, 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 well, based on what I've seen from Kamur, Ledet should do really well. Uh, v checks in. Nasrat picked up his eating habits from Kelvin Gaslam. That is quality, man. That is quality. Oh, hey, Dominant Dan, how you doing, mate? Oh, Apple Man 999 saying only grass or mist. Nice one, dude. Yeah, I, pity I didn't see that earlier on. Would have saved me messing about. So MMA KM is saying Marzo missed on her first attempt. Cheers, dude. So she it looked like she was all right though, even though she uh, looked like she didn't kill herself too bad. Lone Stranger seventy seven saying anyone watching LFA tonight? No, I would if they offered live betting on it, dude. But I'm gonna give it a miss. I only unless I can bet it. I don't really uh, don't really bother with it. So we're still waiting for these weigh-ins to start. Oh, nice one, Coach BZ. Hope you're okay, dude. Hope you're uh, hope you're having a good time in Asia, man. Let me know what part of Asia you uh, you're in you you went to, dude, or you're in, man. I love Asia, dude. I've only ever really been to Singapore, man. But I had a great time. I can't wait to go back there, mate. All right, and that's it for the comments, boys. I can't believe that these weigh-ins haven't started yet. They're like 15 minutes late. Usually I'm the one that's late on these live streams, but this one is late, so I, uh, I'll i keep an eye on it. And as soon as it starts, we'll get going. But at the moment, they're just playing highlight reels from uh, from Donald Cerrone. You know what's funny? Last time last time I uploaded one of the... Or last time I, I live streamed one of these... Uh, one of these type, like, weigh-in reaction type things on YouTube. My YouTube channel got banned for three months from live streaming because they flagged it for copyright for the, um, like the, like the highlight reel footage, the fight footage that they showed during the weigh-ins just before the main event fighters come out. Uh, they flagged it for copyright. I, I literally couldn't believe it. Uh, because obviously the weigh-ins from the UFC... You can use them without infringing copyright because they put the weigh-ins out as promotional material. So it's kind of like fair use should promote in their events. So it is really annoying how uh, how that happened. But I won't make the same mistake again. But then it's weird because you can upload a video like this to YouTube after the fact and they won't shut you off for copyright. So their rules are really, really sketchy, man. You never know where you stand with them. So we're still waiting for the weigh-ins to start. Let me know if you've got any questions, boys, or anything you want to talk about for this event. Vicek said that he messaged Tim Elliott last night via Instagram. He seemed very in it and optimistic about fighting. That that is cool, man. Yeah, the thing with um, the thing, the weird thing about the Elliott versus Askarov fight is, it's like Askarov's got all the skills to win. Like he's a pretty strong wrestler. You know, nasty chokes, big advantage when it comes to striking. But. Like, Elliot's so good in the scramble, and we've seen Askarov spend so much time on his back in his last, you know, last few fights where he just shows no urgency to work his way back to his feet. That if he does that against Elliot, there's a good chance he's going to lose a decision. But at the same time, you know, since his fight against Brandon Moreno, he's moved to train with Mark Henry and Ricardo Almeida and Nick Catone. And you think he obviously doesn't, he's obviously not weak off his back. Because of how skilled a submission grappler he is and how strong of a wrestler he's looked. But he just chooses to spend too much time on his back, if that makes sense. So that's like, you'd think that that would be one of those things that you could coach out of him. I mean, I think he lost the fight against Moreno. I think he was gifted a decision. But he, he, he got a little bit tired. But in that third round, he was literally just laying on his back. Didn't look that tight. He was like punching Moreno off his back. And you have to think like, on one hand, you could say, you know, this is an easy thing to coach out of a fighter. But then on the other th other hand, you can think plenty of fighters with bad fight IQ train at really good gyms. Maybe he's just one of these guys that isn't that smart. And he, he just falls in love with being on his back and trying to catch guys in submissions. It was like even in, you know, that one fight we watched on the live stream yesterday... 
He had so many opportunities to get back up to his feet, but he kept hunting for that long shot Kimura. And he ended up spending like two minutes on the bottom because of it. You know what I mean? He, it's, a, it's a tricky fight, man. Elliot is very tempting because of how bad Askarov has looked against Moreno and in some moments in his past fights in ACB. But then you think, if he has just tightened up that one thing, you know, he could easily out-wrestle Elliot and cruise to a win if the fight stays standing. So it's a tough one, man. It's a bastard of of an event for betting this. I was hoping the odds on Ferreira would improve and they haven't. Maybe they will tomorrow. We did see a lot of line movement on the Masvidal Diaz card on fight day. So maybe we'll see some crazy odds movement tomorrow. Who knows, man? Appleman999 saying Unibet are offering Connor to win in round one or two at 1.8. How do you like that bet? Yeah, I, do you know what, Appleman? I do like that, dude, because the way I look at that is if the fight goes past the second round, I don't see Connor winning. Like Connor said to, I can't remember who it was, it was one of the interviewers, it might have been. No, it wasn't Connor that said this. It was Dominic Cruz. No, actually, I've got it all mixed up. Right, so Dominic Cruz was telling Brendan Schaub on the, um, what does he call it, Food Truck Diaries episode. It's a fucking epic episode. Like, I'll give, uh, give a little plug to Brendan Schaub, man. It was so fucking good. Um, if you haven't watched this yet, boys, go watch it tonight because it was really entertaining. This video here, this Food Truck Diaries one, with uh, Dominic Cruz, and Dominic Cruz said that he bumped into Conor McGregor at the UFC Performance Institute, and Dominic Cruz had picked up in his research, just like I've picked up and pretty much everyone else has picked up, that around about the seven or eight minute mark, Conor just doesn't really have the power to hurt his opponents anymore. You know, he's still somewhat effective, but just for whatever reason, the power goes. And, you know, Conor McGregor was saying to Dominic Cruz, you know, it won't be like that for this fight. I'm in much better shape. And Cruz said what he said to Conor was, I understand you saying that, but, you know, until we see it, we have to talk based on the footage and that we've gotten, the, the past performances, you know, your past fights. So um, I do think that if you bet on Conor to win in round one or two at odds of 1.80, I think you're pretty much... It's the same thing as betting on Connor straight. Because I think if it goes into the third, fourth, and fifth rounds, based on the Floyd Mayweather fight, the two Diaz fights, even the Khabib fight in round three, Khabib was literally stood right in front of Connor. Connor was landing bombs and just wasn't hurting Khabib. Khabib was totally comfortable. I think if it goes into that third, fourth, and fifth round, Cerrone's going to be lighting him up with some Matrix style combinations and it's going to end bad. So, yeah, I do like that 1.80, dude. It's pretty good, man. So Money Man Investing is saying points bet has McGregor at minus 160 right now as a promotion. Only $100 max though, but still good value in my opinion. Let's have a look what minus 160 is, man. Let's take a look. 1.63. Yeah, yeah, to win straight. That's good, mate. I do think McGregor wins, man. I really do. You know me. I'm the biggest Cerrone fan ever. I've bet on him so many times, but, you know, it's hard to see him making it through the first round with how easy he was to hit in the Gaethje fight and the Ferguson fight. And obviously, Connor's a hell of a lot more dangerous than Gaethje and Ferguson stand in. Like, if... Maybe... Like, the only way I could see these bets getting killed is if Cerrone takes the fight to the ground in round one, which is a risk factor, right? There's fucking risk factors with every bet. You're never going to find any bet without risk. Or if Cerrone is one of these guys that is really fragile at 155, but then has an amazing chin at welterweight. Like, you do get that sometimes, right? Like, guys have a worse chin uh, at a lighter weight class, then they move up a weight class. Like, Anthony Smith is a good example Anthony Smith looks so fragile when he fought at middleweight. And then when he moved up to light heavyweight, he's like a different guy. Like, Ozdemir couldn't hurt him. John Jones couldn't hurt him. So, you know, that is, uh, that's something to think about. It's a possibility. Hype and saying, I'll be looking at the odds on Cowboy Live if it goes past the second round. Yeah, you know what, man? 
I, w- I would even look at the odds on Cowboy at the end of the first. Because if he does get molly in round one, like, if Cowboy gets, like, fucked up in round one, then his odds are probably going to be, like, in the, like, 4.50, 5.0 territory, which is, like, plus 350, plus 400 territory. And from the first round, right, the fight can go one of two ways. Either Connor starts to slow down and momentum starts to swing in Cerrone's favour, or, like, Connor does what Masvidal did, right, after giving Cerrone a very difficult first round, goes out there and completes the job, lands the kill shot, gets the finish. Or, I mean... Connor really does do what he told Dominic Cruz and can actually fight at a high pace for 25 minutes. But at those sort of big underdog odds, plus 400, plus 350, you're getting a good margin there. Because I feel like if it goes past the first... I feel in round one, I give Connor like a 70 to 80% chance of winning the fight. Once it goes into round two, I think it becomes a 50-50 fight. Once it goes into round three... I start to get towards 70 to 80% in favour of Cerrone. Obviously, that's without seeing how the first and second played out. But based on their past fights, that's what I'd be looking at live. Beep Beep in my Jeep is saying, do you like Cowboy by Seb? Do you know what, mate? Like, it's it's mad because everyone's favouring Cerrone. Uh, sorry, everyone's favouring Connor, But it's actually probably quite an easy fight for Cerrone if he takes the fight to the ground. If Cowboy does take the fight to the ground, he's got a great chance of Seb in. McGregor because Cerrone's at such a high level on the ground like Cerrone's way more dangerous than Khabib on the ground in the sense that Khabib is just a volume guy that's just looking to break you down with pressure and brutality and eventually you just won't be able to take it anymore and you'll have to give up a submission or you'll just have to tap out the strikes right but Khabib's never in a position where he can quickly take you back and choke you out or deliver devastating ground and pound to force the referee into stopping it. Khabib's not that kind of guy who just sit- systematically breaks you down and smothers you. He gives you nothing, no space. He gives you nothing. Whereas Cowboy is that kind of guy that can expose Connor's relatively... I'm not going to call it a low-level ground game, but Connor's got big holes on the ground, right? And if you give Cerrone one little opening, he is the kind of guy that can end the fight. So there is a there is a chance Cowboy wins by sub for sure, man. But then, you know, we've seen Connor kind of turtle up against Diaz, give his back up against Khabib. Would Cerrone just look to, to get the finish with ground and pound? It's tough to say, right? But to be fair, Connor has kind of gifted rear naked choke submissions to Diaz and Khabib. So, yeah, I do think Cowboy by Seb is realistic. What are the odds on that, actually, thinking about it? Yeah, the odds on that are decent, you know, 7.50, 7.25. Pretty good. Appleman 999 has said, do you think Philly has anything for Yusuf? Do you think Philly will wrestle? Yeah, man, that is a real close fight because... Oh man, like I I spent a lot of time on this fight last night and it's a real tough one because if we look at their records, both guys look completely different in every fight. So if we go through their record, so against Benitez, Yusuf came out the gate very, very aggressively, um, got dinged pretty hard for getting overly aggressive and then kind of went into a defensive shell and then caught Benitez with a count the right hand as Benitez was going in, in for the kill after he wobbled him and hurt him bad. I've noticed that Philly's striking defense is really good in round one. But it kind of goes out the window if you pressure him. So if Yusuf comes out hard and aggressive like he did against Benitez and Mokhtarian, then I think Philly is going to struggle really bad. Problem is, Yusuf didn't do that against Mike Davis, and he didn't do that against Shaman Marais, to the point where, if you go back and watch the Shaman Marais fight, like, Philly, uh, sorry, uh, Yusuf barely landed a significant head strike in the first two rounds against Marais. So much of that fight was contested in the clinch. And against Mike Davis, Yusuf played the role of Matador and counter-struck Davis. So he's seen really different sides to Yusuf. 
And the way I look at it is, if the version of Yusuf the Foot Benitez shows up, it's probably going to do pretty well. But, you know, we haven't seen any of Yusuf's takedown defense or ground game. You know, the four fights we can gauge him on have all been stand-up fights. If he fights like he did against Shaman Marais, I think he's going to struggle. Because... It just, he wasn't very effective at landing head strikes in this fight. And Philly fights very long. He's got good footwork. And Yusuf was quite flat-footed, quite stationary in this matchup. I really think he's going to struggle to land on Philly if he fights like this. I think Philly's footwork will give him big, big problems. Um, and the Mike Davis fight, the one thing that Yusuf did great in this fight was the leg kicks. We didn't really see that in any of his other fights. He threw the odd leg kick, but leg kicks were a massive part of his game plan against Mike Davis. And the thing with Philly is, you talk about we've seen different sides to Philly. We've seen different sides to, sorry, different sides to Yusuf. We've seen different sides to Philly as well, which is what makes this a tough fight to predict. So against Shaman Marais, he was excellent defensively, kept the high boxing guard, great footwork. And uh, Marais didn't get anywhere near him, and he caught him with a beautiful, you know, counter head kick, which set up the, the finish by ground and pound. Against Miles Dewey in round one, very good defensively, light on his feet, went to the high boxing guard. Dewey couldn't land anything in round one. But it's almost like Philly loses patience and loses discipline and gets sucked into, like, crazy exchanges. Because what I've noticed is he looked great in round one against Marais, and the fight ended quickly. He looked great in round one against Mar in, against Jury, but then became much more hittable in the second and the third. And uh, and it's tough, man. It is tough. It is tough because at times, particularly against like Shaman Marais, Yusuf's look pretty flat-footed, not particularly effective. When he's coming forward and being aggressive, he's very, very dangerous. So it depends if he does that or not. But the, the big concern if you bet, the reason why I don't like betting on Yusuf as a favourite is because Philly's offensive wrestling is amazing and we haven't seen any of Yusuf's takedown defence or ground game. So I think it's a pretty big gamble. But it's also a gamble to bet on Philly because Yusuf's got nuclear missiles in his hands. His leg kicks are incredible and Philly loves to get sucked into reckless exchanges. And if these two boys get into any rec any exchanges where they both start sitting down hard on their shots and winging bombs, there's only going to be one winner, man, and Yusuf is going gonna, is gonna to hurt him bad. So, right, boys, these weigh-ins are about to start. Let's get them going. Here we've got JJ Aldrich walking out. So we'll keep an eye on the uh, on the fighters that look the worst at the weigh-ins. Oh, here we've got Pat Barry in her corner. She trains with Rose Namajunas. Aldrich looked fine at the weigh-ins, at the early weigh-in. She looks absolutely fine here, pretty confident. And I think the mental game might be a bit of a... Uh, might be something to consider with Aldrich because, of course, she was absolutely cruising against Macy Barber. And then as soon as Barber kind of came out that second round aggressive, Aldrich kind of wilted a little bit. But then she was putting some bad spots in her last fight against Laura Mueller and toughed it out and came back. So maybe she's overcome that mental hurdle from the Macy Barber fight. Maybe she'll look a lot better against Sabina Mazo. But let's see how they both look. Oh, Jesus. Mazo with a pretty big size advantage here. Both girls wearing the Reebok footwear. And this size difference makes it pretty hard to bet on uh, to bet on Aldrich, to be honest. So often in women's MMA, we see physicality dictate how fights will play out because the bigger girl will just be able to outmuscle her opponent in grappling exchanges or walk through their strikes. And I didn't realize there was that big of a size advantage there. What are the, uh, what are the stats on this one? So Aldrich, 5'5", five 67.5 five, inch reach. See, that's how it's misleading. So, Mars, there's not a massive size difference on paper between Marzo and Aldrich. But when you see them stood next to each other, there's a huge size difference. This is Justin Ledette against Alexa Kammer. Ledette used to fight a heavyweight, so you'd be thinking he's got a decent size advantage here. He is a tall guy. Does like to fight very long. Like I say, Ledette is seen a bit as a bit of a meme in the MMA community. People take the piss out of him. But I actually think Ledette's probably got the best jab in the light heavyweight division. I can't think of anyone with a better jab. If you can think of someone at light heavyweight with a better jab than Ledette, let me know. Camo looking pretty good here. Is there a size difference? There is. 
You would expect Ledet to be the bigger man, and he is. He used to fight at heavyweight. Both guys looking pretty healthy, though. But the thing is, you know what they say, right? You can't use a fucking size advantage when you're on your back. And if, you know, Camo comes in with a grappling heavy game plan, the size difference won't matter. But that size difference, if it does stay standing, should make it easier for Ledet to start working behind that jab. This is Dober against Hakarast. I bet Hakarast a few weeks ago now. Bet him at around about 1.44. So I've got a lot of money on Hakarast this weekend. Bet about £4,000 on him. Um, and he is looking... He is looking a lot better than he did earlier on. Obviously, he was looking a little bit uh, low energy at the early weigh-ins. Had to go to the towel. But he looks pretty healthy. Pretty standard here. Has pretty weird nipples, though. I've never noticed that before. Very, very strange looking nipples, but Hakarast, pretty standard. Hakarast is one of these weird guys that's got like uh, really skinny legs, but then quite a big upper body. And now this is Drew Dober walking out. And Dober was one of the fighters that we said looked a little bit worse than usual. So we will see how he looks now. He's had time to rehydrate. Looking, uh, looking absolutely fantastic here. Dober looking great as always. Looks to have fully recovered. All good. Both guys looking pretty good. Now, oh, Hakarast is a little bit taller on the tail of the tape. Should we see if there's any size difference here? Don't think there will be. Both guys are roughly the same size. Doba actually a little bit a little bit bigger, which makes the uh, the strike the tail of the tape even more misleading. If we take a look at this one, we have got Doba at five foot eight, and Hakarast at five foot ten. And it certainly didn't look like Hakarast was the taller man there. So that uh, that tail of the tape definitely a little bit off. Robinson Canola saying Hack, let's go. Apple Man saying Nazrat, the future of the division. Yeah, man, I think so, man. Nazrat is just uh, just definitely definitely a little bit special, man. I agree with you, boys. This is uh, Askarov now against Tim Elliott. Elliott used to fight a bantamweight. Askarov's had a couple fights of bantamweight as well, but let's see how both these guys match up. Of course, we don't know a lot about Askarov. Getting a handshake off Mr. Joe Rogan and Dana White. Training with Mark Henry now. Here comes Tim Elliott. He said that he is fighting for his life because he expects to be cut if he loses. Although, he's 1-1 one one in his last two, so no big losing streak or anything like that. And Elliot looked good at the weigh-ins. So did Askarov. Both guys look pretty standard here. And no major size differences either. Been misleading because Elliot's got his head down, but when you can see they're both stood up walking behind each other, they're both roughly the same size. Who have we gone next? So, Andre Philly, at least on the tail of the tape, should have a bit of a size difference here, or size advantage, but like we saw with Hakarast and Doba, that tail of the tape can be a little bit misleading. So, Yusuf on the small side for 145. If we take a quick look here, if we get it up, let's just load that up uh, while we take a look at Yusuf. So Yusuf also looked a little bit low energy at the at the weigh-ins. Physically, he looked great, but uh, looks all right here. And if we take a look, Philly five foot eleven with a seventy-four inch reach. Yusuf five foot nine with a seventy-one inch reach. So let's see how these two boys look when they stand next to each other. And Philly also looked a little bit sucked in, a little bit dehydrated. So let's see if he's fully recovered. Danny Castillo with him again. Philly looking very good now, ready to go, looking all good. And let's see if he's got a size advantage here. You'd think he'd be much bigger than Yusuf. Not really at all, man, not really at all. What's interesting is the size difference in fights like this can be misleading because when you watch Philly's past fights, he's like really long, really lean, uh, you know, likes to fight long, likes to stay behind his jab. And then when you look at Yusuf... He's like short, compact, athletic, explosive. When you watch him side by side, you just assume that Philly's going to be like the bigger, taller, longer fighter. And then when you actually see him stood in front of each other, they're pretty much the same size. Obviously, Yusuf's much bigger, but in terms of height, there's nothing there. So, um, 
that definitely makes me lean a bit more heavily towards Youssef. Now, Macy Barber was involved in Scalegate earlier on today. People on social media accusing the Athletic Commission of missing the fact that she missed weight. Um, here she is. Looked uh, Didn't look good on the scales at the open weigh-ins, but she's all right here, man. I'm not sure. I am getting vibes that she had a tough weight cut. <coughs> I don't know what it is, but if you, you look at her like earlier on in the week at Media Day and stuff, she was full of life, full of energy, looking nice and healthy. But in her face, man, at the earlier weigh-ins and just here, I'm not sure. Like, she's not looking. What the fuck is going on here? What in God's fuck is going on? I, I don't understand what's going on right now. Anyway, like I was saying... Um, Macy Barber, have a feeling she had a bit of a tough weight, tough weight cut. Doesn't look to have as much life in her. Doesn't look as healthy as she did earlier on in Media Week. Whereas Modafieri, the exact opposite. Modafieri looks absolutely fantastic here. And it also looks that Modafieri, the much bigger, much more physically imposing woman, Macy Barber, is uh, quite small, quite slight, quite feminine, quite petite. Whereas uh, Mod Affieri is much more physically imposing. But Mod Affieri also almost 40, 40 years old. No, I think she's like 37 years old. So um, it's uh, it's one of those fights where she's probably going to be too stiff to get in deep enough on Barber's legs to take her down. And she can't really hurt Barber standing. So this is Carlos Diego Ferreira. And what's interesting about Ferreira is he usually looks like death at the early weigh-ins. And he also looks pretty shit at the ceremonial weigh-ins as well. Uh, but he looked much better than usual at the at the ceremonial weigh-ins. How is he going to look here? Well, he's got a cap on, which makes it a little bit more difficult for us to assess. But I'd actually say Ferreira looks really good. Ferreira looks better than I can remember in a very long time. Usually at the weigh-ins, this guy looks very bad. But it's clear that he's taking this fight against Pet is dead serious. Because... Uh, he hasn't looked this good in a long time. And here comes Anthony Pettis, one of my favourite fighters of all time. Obviously, he's lost his way a little bit over the last few years. But he gave me so many, so many uh, happy nights, man, when I was a lot younger. Jumping off the sofa for his highlight reel KOs back in WEC, back when he first came into the UFC. I was so excited when the UFC first signed him. And uh, he's an absolute beast. Pretty much the same size. Both guys looking great. Solar Cowboy telling me that Modafferi has just gone Super Saiyan. I thought it was something to do with that man. I don't watch anime, but um, I had a feeling it was something to do with that. I only know about Super Saiyan and stuff from KSI. And this is Ode Osborne making his UFC debut. Thanking Dana White for the opportunity. Completely missed the scales. Makes sense. So, I mean, why have you got to stand on a scale, right, when you've already made weight like 12 hours earlier or something? And Old Osborne's one of those guys that's quite small for the division. So, looked, uh, looked great earlier on. And he's taking his sweet ass time here. Jesus, he wants his cage time, man. Or his time in the spotlight. And everyone seems to be on Ode Osborne for this fight. I'm not so sure though, man. There's not that much footage available on him. But from what I have seen, super average. Super duper average. Questionable striking defense. No ground game at all. No takedown defense. But... Kelleher's pretty got pretty poor striking defense as well and doesn't ever really use his wrestling. So tough, 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 tough. Is uh is Osborne's athleticism gonna be enough to see him get a win in his debut? And let's see the size difference here. So Osborne's got a huge reach advantage over Kelleher, but they should be roughly the same height. And they are. Pretty much the same size by the look of it. Osborne is taking his sweet ass time to get off that stage. Jesus. 
That's why this bloody live. That's why this weighing probably took so long to get started. He was probably fucking around in the back room or something, taking his sweet ass time to get where he should have been. Right, Alexi Olenek against Murray Screen. So the, the out of all, I didn't really expect much of a size difference in any of these fights. Um, I was surprised by the size difference in the Marzo versus Aldrich fight because it only said that Marzo was two inches taller on topology when she looks a hell of a lot taller. But I do expect a, a big size difference in this one. Oh, Maurice Green's only two hundred and forty-three pounds. So for a guy that big, I think he's six foot seven. For a guy who's six foot seven, you would have expected him to push the two hundred and sixty-five pound heavyweight limit, but uh, he's not that heavy for a heavyweight. I mean, Olenek might actually be heavier than two hundred and forty-three pounds. Olenek might be about two fifty. Shaking everyone's hand, he wants his cage time like Osborne as well. And I think the blonde lady uh, is actually Al Alexi Olenek's wife. Uh, they've got no. He weighs in a two hundred. 38 pounds five pounds lighter and obviously a big size difference here maurice green much 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 bigger than olenek uh, which will make it very difficult for olenek to get inside and land that overhand right we were talking about in the breakdown but yeah, i think that lady is uh is olenek's wife they got three kids together he doesn't train with her or he's, she's not a training partner or anything like that he just takes her everywhere with him now pennington looked pretty damn good at the early weigh-ins and Holly Holm looked dreadful. Holly Holm looked probably the best we've, uh, the worst we've ever seen Holly at a weigh in, and uh, we'll be interested to see how much she's recovered here and how much or how she looks at this ceremonial weigh in. But Pennington looking very happy with herself, very very comfortable, very confident. Pennington's had her issues with weight. She's had situations where you know she's lacked confidence in fights, and Holly coming out raring to go. And you know what, man? With Holly Holm, she does still train at Jackson Wink MMA. A lot of fighters, a lot of uh, you know, a lot of people that have been training at Jackson Wink for a long time have uh, have left Jackson Wink, but Holly's still there. Um, and everyone that I can think of that has trained at Jackson Wink has declined over the last few years. Even John Jones hasn't looked great, and uh, or by his usual standards hasn't looked great. But Holly, with a bit of a size advantage there. Uh, and she looks alright man, Holly looks fine now, Holly doesn't look too bad, but how much is the weight cut that difficult taken out of her considering her age? And I'm guessing now this means we go to the uh, to the main event. So boys, drop any, uh, drop any, um, I'm actually going to turn that by here a sec so that we don't get copyright flagged. Oh fuck it, we're gonna get to if we're gonna get copyright flagged, we'll get copyright flagged. We'll leave it up. It's just one of those things. If YouTube wanna be bastards, we'll let them be bastards. But um, yeah, if you got any more questions, boys, anything you want to talk about, drop it in the live chat on Twitch or Mixer. If not, boys, as soon as we are done here, I am gonna head back over to my website and we're gonna live stream the research for Holly Home versus Raquel Pennington and also Sabina Marzo against JJ Aldrich and after seeing that weigh in seeing how big Marzo looked that definitely changes how I feel about this fight I didn't expect there to be that big of a size difference so I'm looking forward to jumping into that one and also looking forward to jumping into the Pennington fight after seeing how bad Holly Holm looked so we will see what happens Ghostface Killers is saying the Jackson Wink in turmoil can't be a good vibe yeah I agree man for sure for sure, for sure, for sure. And what we'll do when they get uh, when they get the interviews up for Connor and Cerrone, we'll uh, we'll put the audio on. Also, shout out to the two people watching on Mixer, man. Everyone made fun of me for streaming on Mixer yesterday, um, but yeah, I was uh, I was chilling with some with some of my family. My young nephew was telling me I need to get on Mixer over Christmas. So we're on Mixer now, boys, if anyone prefers Mixer. I know that the the, uh, the Xbox, Microsoft are pushing it hard. So who knows, man, when that new Xbox drops the end of the year, maybe Mixer will blow up and start to, uh, start to take over from Twitch. Who knows, man? So we are on Mixer as well. 
and this has been a real long way in man you maybe it feels long because i usually usually skim through don't usually watch all this sort of stuff but um this one is taking a long time so if we look at the tail of the tape on this fight if we pop that in there what have we got we got mcgregor's about five foot nine i think yeah, five foot nine, seventy-four inch reach. Con uh, Cerrone six foot one, with a seventy-three inch reach. So you would expect Cerrone to be quite a bit bigger here. Would expect him to have a decent size advantage. You would actually expect him to tower over Connor. You know, six foot one. Over uh, over a fighter that's five foot nine. But let's see how they look. Cerrone looked amazing uh, at the weigh-ins. He's been looking amazing all week. Now, Connor looked amazing as well, but how much does that extra weight affect him? Or will it affect him? It might not. He's telling everyone it won't. Historically, we know from the Diaz fights that it probably will. After seven or eight minutes against Diaz in the second fight, he was uh, he was pretty tired. He was running away from Diaz with a minute left to go in round two because he was too tired to stand in front of him. And, of course, he gassed after about four minutes in the first fight. Now... Cerrone looking great, looking very healthy, looking much better at 170 than he did at 155. And he has been very confident all week. Very, very comfortable, very confident. And I would love I it's harsh, man. I love Cerrone and I love uh and I love Connor. And I think this lady in the background here is the lady that worked at Best Buy and she basically fought a shoplifter in the doorway and stopped the shoplifter from leaving the store and then got fired because of how rough she was with him. So Dana White said on social media that he is he was basically going to bring her out to the fight for the weekend and show her a good time. So that was pretty cool. That was pretty nice. And there you see Cerrone talking to her, which was pretty cool. See if Connor re recognizes who she is as well. Although I'm guessing if she's with Dana for the weekend, she's already met met the uh, met the main event fighters and after this boys we are going to end this live stream move on over to the website live stream research from Marzo Aldrich Pennington home here is Connor back like the renegade master for the first time in a long time Camera angle doesn't give us a chance to see what he's like, really. And uh, also difficult to see the height. Oh, not too much of a height difference, actually. Not as big of a size difference as you'd expect. And that's why these uh, that's why these tailor the tapes are so confusing, man. If you look at it, it said Marzo only had a 2-inch height advantage. Oh, let's, uh, let's just pop this on, guys. Two secs. I mean, it's one of the most important fights ever that doesn't have a world title behind it. Give me your thoughts on what this means to you. Oh, this is incredible. We're going to blow the fucking roof off this place, man. I cannot wait. Everyone says I never show up. This is the fight to show up for. I cannot wait. I can't wait to watch. Good luck to you, sir. Donald Cerrone, ladies and gentlemen. The Notorious, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, Connor, it's great to see you back, and it's great to see you motivated and excited about this. Give us your thoughts on why this fight means so much to you and what it means tomorrow night to fight Cowboy. How good do I look at 170? Yes, I feel real good at this way. I'm coming for all of them in this division. It begins with Donald. Let's go. I'm excited. Thank you all for the support. Thank you for coming out. I apologize. I'm a little late. It's hard work getting the kids ready and bringing them to the events. So, thank you all for your patience. You're in for a great show tomorrow night. Tomorrow night, I'm dedicating this fight to me, Ma, back home. I love you, Ma. We all love you. Conor McGregor, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, everyone, for coming. God, man, I love Conor, and I love Cowboy so much, man. It is a shame one of them has to lose. Odds have actually started to improve on Conor. We haven't seen 1.34 this week. Uh, he's been 1.30, 1.33 for most of the week. Just started to spike up a little bit. But yeah, the ta the, the stats on Tapology are so misleading. Because in this weigh-in, Marzo is only 2 inches taller than Aldrich, allegedly. But looks much bigger when they stand face-to-face -face in the same footwear. Hakarast, it says on Tapology is taller than Dober. He's five foot ten to Dober's five foot eight, which again is only a two inch difference. 
but the two inch difference between Marzo and Aldrich was huge. Whereas here, Doba actually looked a little bit bigger than Hakkaras, even though it says Hakkaras should be taller. And then for the main event, Connor's only five foot nine. Cerrone is only, you know, is six foot one. You'd expect, you know, Cerrone to be much bigger, and he wasn't really. Maybe like an inch or two different. They're pretty much the same size. So it's a bit of a weird one, man. But that is going to be it for this live stream, boys. Unless we got any more comments. No, that is going to be it. So nice one, everyone. Um, if you are going to join me for these live streams on the website, nice one. I will see you over there now. If not, I'll be live streaming again on YouTube, Mixer, and Twitch tomorrow. Where we'll be breaking down the remaining four fights that I haven't talked about on YouTube. And we will also be hunting for a decent value prop on all the fights this weekend. So take care, everyone. Nice one for watching. Love you, boys. And I will see you all very soon. Take care, everyone.